Welcome to the Trust and Believe Nomad Cast, a podcast that covers a wide range of topics. So come chill with us on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Here's your host, Mr. Anderson. Welcome everybody to episode 89 of the Trust and Believe Nomad Cast. I'm your host, Mr. Anderson. Thank you for tuning in today on the 18th of March, 2022. Today is Friday, some people's favorite day. Some people don't like Friday. Friday is not my favorite day. Saturday is my favorite day of the week. But again, any day you north of the grass is a good day, right? Everybody tracking. Appreciate it. Again, thank you guys for tuning in, lending me your eyes, lending me your ears, staying active on the social media through all my social media accounts, staying active on the YouTube, staying active on all the podcast platforms, the Apples, the Spotify's, the Googles, everywhere that you see me, everywhere that you hear me. Thank you for your continued support, the likers, subscribers, connectors, so on and so forth, and the folks that's visiting the website as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, today we're going to have a little fun today. Uh, it's Friday. Finally, it's Friday. And for all the new listeners and the new followers and connectors and everything, Friday is a day that we kind of let our hair down, if you will, um, and just have a fun day because typically for those that's working, Fridays are a day of exhilaration. It's a day of that somewhat mini vacation, two days away from the boss, two days away from work. And Fridays, again, just that day to kind of relax. So what I want to do and what I try to do and what I attempt to do and what I'm going to do is have Fridays where it's just fun, fun topics, not nothing dealing with mentals and none of this other stuff. Just have fun. So in the last few weeks, we've been talking about movies. We've been talking about secrets of food of fast food companies today we're going to talk about one of my favorite movies if not the favorite movie in my library of all time let's do it again let's do it again is a movie starring Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby let's do it again let's do it again love that movie phenomenal movie one of my favorite movies of all time so many twists and turns to the movie the plot thickens in the movie. So many oohs and ahs and people getting chased and people hypnotizing folks. And there's just so many things going on in that movie. So I'm a fan of structure. I love structure. I live by structure. So we're going to structure this a little differently. Usually we have, we talk about whatever I'm talking about, talk about the history, so on and so forth. But for this particular one, we're going to talk about, I already read the title. We're going to have, talk about the plot. Just some wave tops on the plot. Not really conducting a deep dive into the plot. But we'll talk about the plot. We'll talk about the significant cast members. We'll talk about facts. And we'll talk about cultural influences. And then we go ahead and close it. Close it out. And uh, set the conditions for next week. So again, here's the thumbnail. Let's do it again. A movie classic. It's a timeless movie classic. It is one of many movies in that black exploitation era of the 1970s. Everything was fun. Everything wasn't about torture and all this other stuff that was going on in these other movies. It was all about fun, fast life, trying to get money. But it was done in a fun way, not in the meant to be malicious or malice or anything. It was just fun. It was two guys that worked hard, jo hurt hard jobs. You got a little tongue tied. Guys that was working hard jobs and want to do better. They want to do right by their lodge by their wives and by society. They found a way to kind of come up on the come up, if you will, find ways to increase their, uh, their financial, uh, financial ways. And, uh, they did it. And then, uh, things end up happening they had to go back and forth. So on and so forth. So again, let's go ahead and let's talk about it. Y'all let's do it again. A classic movie. It's a timeless classic. So again, I'll start with the plot. Milkman Clyde Williams, played by Sidney Poitier, and his best friend, Billy Foster, played by Bill Cosby, are members of a fraternal lodge called the Brothers and Sisters of Shaka. The lodge is in dire need of money for the retirement home that they sponsor. Since Clyde has a gift for hypnotism, they decide to fix an upcoming boxing match by hypnotizing the underground fighter played by Jimmy Walker. The scam works, and the men collect the winnings, big winnings, huge winnings, before a couple of mafia dons realize they've been tricked. 
and decide to track Clyde and Billy down. The Mafia Downs were played by John Amos and Calvin Lockhart. The story goes from Atlanta to New Orleans, back to Atlanta, and then subsequently ending in New Orleans. Oh, by the way, they go back to Atlanta for the final scene. Now, we talked about that movie. There's so many things going on. They hypnotized Jimmy Walker, who everyone knows is J.J. from Good Times. They hypnotized him. He was a weak fighter. He was very scared, very paranoid. They snuck in the daggone hotel room, hypnotized him, right? They end up winning all this money. They go back to freaking Atlanta because this happened in New Orleans. They go back to Atlanta. They celebrate with everybody. They give money to the lodge. Now the lodge has money to build a retirement home, to sponsor that retirement home, fix it up, modernize it and everything. They had a big feast. And then Clyde, not Clyde, but then freaking uh, Kansas City Mac and Biggie Smalls, and I run down the cast list, they tracked them down after they was tricked. They get to freaking um, Atlanta. They run up on Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier. Hey, we know what you did, so on and so forth. They go back to New Orleans to trick Biggie Smalls again because Biggie Smalls and Kansas City Mac, they're bitter rivals, all right? They end up freaking waging, doing the hypnotism, doing everything over again, but now the roles are reversed. So now Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier end up tricking Biggie Smalls and they end up tricking Dag on Kansas City Mac. They run it through New Orleans, getting chased all through the freaking city. They end up, uh, the movie ends, well, not that particular part of the movie end, but the plot ends in New Orleans with the freaking money, and the police chief of New Orleans tell these guys to get out of this town, so on and so forth. They give money to the orphanage, this and that and the third. Now Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby, they drive back to Atlanta, and then they think about, doing it again but then it drove off i left a lot a lot of it out because i like for you guys to see it and if you've seen it you know what i'm talking about there's so many twists and turns this this movie is just it's fun it's fascinating and it's exciting but you have to put yourself back into the year that it was made and i'll talk about that because if you if you base that movie now on fun and you know uh everything going fast and everything you're not going to get it. You have to kind of put yourself in the mindset of the writers, the actors, the directors, the screenplay, the plot, everything, uh, the theme about the movie back in those days. In those days, that movie was fast paced. It was fun. Not so much now because it's a different version. Uh, it's a different way we, we view movies. It's different ways we consume movies. But nonetheless, with all that being said, let's do it again remains, in my opinion, one of the best movies of all time. And you think about everybody that was in that movie, how they all synchronized together. It was a, it was a, it's a damn good movie. It's a freaking good movie, y'all. All right. So I talked about the title, talked about the plot. Let's run down this cast list. All-star, Hall of Fame, one-of-a-kind cast list, and also has some interesting nuggets about the cast list as well. So let's go ahead and go. The cast, Sidney Poitier played Clyde Williams. Bill Cosby played Billy Foster, also played Mongo Slade in that movie as well. Calvin Lockhart played Biggie Smalls. John Amos played Kansas City Mac. Jimmy Walker played Bootney Farnsworth. Ozzie Davis played Elder Johnson. Denise Nichols played Beth Foster. Lee Chamberlain played Dee Dee Williams. Mel Stewart played Ellison. Julius Harris played Bubble Top Woodson. Paul Harris played Jody Tips. And Val Avery played Lieutenant Bottomley. Now, some interesting facts about this movie. The movie was filmed on location in Atlanta, and New Orleans. George Foreman was in the movie. He played a factory worker. If you remember, he the one that him and Bill Cosby was going to uh, go head up. They took their shirts off, getting ready to fight, and then at the end of that scene, they hugged it out. Jane Kennedy was also in the movie. Remember, she was in the opening scene at the factory, and Bill Cosby almost ran her over with the daggone forklift. The Staple Singers blessed the soundtrack with the song, Let's Do It Again. 
Let's do it again. Curtis Mayfield produced the whole soundtrack. Sidney Poitier directed the movie. Let's do it again was the second of a so-called trilogy wedged in between Uptown Saturday Night and a piece of piece of the action. The movie made eleven million dollars. Now we talk about culture influence. Let's go ahead and transition into culture influence. That movie again for our culture, it was so many black exploitation movies, and I don't even know if you can define or categorize. Um, let's do it again as a black exploitation movie because a lot of those black exploitation movies of the 1970s, particularly the early 1970s, was about vampires and uh, drugs and crime and being pimps and all this stuff. It was a lot of negativity with those black exploitation movies. However, they remain cult classics. It was it was part of the culture because we've seen so many movies prior to that. It was all about slavery and bondage and just everything negative. But then we kind of flipped the script and we made the hustler lifestyle glamorous. We made the pimp life lifestyle glamorous. We made crime, robbing people, doing all these things glamorous in those movies. So it was a transition from a negative, from an ugly negative to a beautiful negative, if you will, if that makes sense. And I think when you talk about Uptown Saturday Night, which was right before Let's Do It Again, actually shot a year earlier, 1974. Uh, Let's Do It Again was different. It was almost like some of the other movies of different genres where it was all about being funny. It was comedy, but you had to be strategic in what you was doing. And think about it. Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier and their characters, um, they bamboozled two mob guys, two guys that was killing people, beating people up, had a, a negative reputation. So they ended up putting themselves on the line from going to Atlanta. And, you know, built Sidney Poitier was very versed in hypnotism. So they took a chance on life. I'm speaking in movie terms now. It took a chance on their life, endangering their lives, right? Because they was married. They had friends at the lodge, so on and so forth. So they go to freaking uh, New Orleans and risk their life to go down there and, you know, and try to hypnotize a boxer. And then they trying to, they snuck in the hotel room, almost fell out the window. I mean, there was so many things going on. They ended up getting caught. And it was just so many plots. It was just so many twists and turns to the movie. And it was a beautiful, the movie, the movie, in my opinion, was a beautiful struggle. And I think a lot of people that grew up in that era, they understand the movie because, you know, it was fun. It was fascinating. It was fast paced. It was action. You didn't know who to trust, who to turn to. This guy is scheming, you know, because everyone thought when they came, when Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier came down, they thought they was on the up and up, which they were. But then when Kansas City Mac went back to Atlanta to retrieve Bill Cosby and dag on Sidney Poitier, they realized, hey, it takes two to the, ta two to the tangle. I want to get after freaking Biggie Smalls. You guys help me. And then what happened? Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier, they ended up tricking both of them. And they ended up, you know, at the police uh, precinct in New Orleans. But again, for culture influence, again, I went off on the tangent. But for culture influence, I mean, that movie, again, it was the sign of the times. And you saw a transition from the pimps, the hustlers, the negative connotations of the culture with those early 70s black exploitation movies. Okay, let's get some A list stars that's played in pivotal and critical roles, transitional roles in that era. And let's not worry about the pimps, the hustlers, and all that. Let's have something where, yes, it's about crime, but it's a funny crime. Yes, yeah, about money laundering and, and gambling and all these negative things. But let's kind of, you know, shed a light on it. Let's have some fun with it. Let's be fun about what we're doing. And I think that was the intent when Sidney Poitier directed it. And I can't remember the guy that actually wrote the screenplay. I should have included him in this as well. Um, uh, but again, the movie, it was it was a different it was a, a breath of fresh air. And you think about Uptown Saturday night and then you have Let's Do It Again. And then they end it with a piece of action. A lot of people say, well, that was a, a somewhat a trilogy. It was a trilogy because those three movies were together. But it was the same characters and some of the other characters played in all three of those movies. But it was different uh, cast name. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really a trilogy. It was a trilogy in the sense that was three consecutive movies 
that Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier played in together. So if you want to call it, call it a trilogy, that's fine. I'm with it as well. But it wasn't. But then it kind of was, you know. Now, the first time I watched this movie, I was born in 74. The movie was made in 75. I think the first time I ever watched the movie was probably around 1984, 85-ish. Now, I remember it was a station in Detroit called WKBD Channel 50, and they've been absorbed by CBS. Uh, they no longer operate as WKBD, to my knowledge anyway. But they used to show like the, the Wednesday night movie, the Thursday night movie, or something like that. And I remember watching that, and I was like, man, this is great. This is fun. You know, I've, and I've watched this movie ever since. I got the dag on uh, when I had the VCR tape. I had it on VCR tape, had it on CD. Now it's, you know, on my freaking, uh, not Netflix, but it's on Amazon. So I can, it's already at the ready. So whenever I want to watch it, bam, click a button. But again, let's do it again. Remains one of my top, it's in my top 10 movies of all time, if not the number one movie for me, for Damon Anderson. Phenomenal movie. I love the plot. I love the actors. I love how everybody was integrated in the movie. I love the plot. I love the, how everybody has synergy. And uh, I don't think there was any, like, backstories. You know, you see a lot of these popular movies with a lot of these A-list stars. Well, I hate you. You hate me. We can't get along. I don't want to be in the trailer. I'm not going to be at the whatever. I don't think it was a lot of that. I think these guys and gals, they all got along from what I understand during my research i think everybody got along and it was just a fun movie so if you haven't seen it let's do it again made in 1975 bill cosby and sydney portier one of the cult class classics of that era let's do it again let's do it again all right y'all so we'll go ahead and close it out and uh, let's put a button let's wrap it up and put a button on it thank you guys for tuning in today appreciate all you guys are doing all my civilians, all my military members, first responders all over the world. Thank you for supporting the Trust and Believe Nomad cast. But let's get these subscriptions up, the likes, the follows, the connections. Tell a family member, tell a friend, all the etceteras. Tell an ally, tell a foe, tell an enemy, tell anybody, co-workers, bosses, about the Trust and Believe Nomad cast. Tell them to get on YouTube and like and subscribe and click that bell icon so they'll be notified of all the latest and greatest as it relates to the Trust and Believe Nomad cast. They got a website, LinkedIn, all these sites, the audio sites, the Apples, the Spotify's, the Googles. I am everywhere. I am not hiding. hiding. You know how the rappers say nowadays, nowadays, I'm outside. I'm outside. Damon Anderson is outside. Mr. Anderson is outside. The Trust and Believe Nomad cast is outside. Thank you. Thank you again for all the support. Hope you guys have a great Friday, a great Saturday, and a great Sunday. Use this time to relax. Some uh, states, some cities, the weather's starting to get warmer. Get out there, enjoy yourselves, watch a movie, go to the park, walk, do PT, play basketball. Do whatever you want to do. And like I always say, if you don't feel like doing jack, you ain't got to do jack. You ain't got to do nothing. But enjoy yourselves. Do what you want to do. Be safe. Be dangerous but be safe, all right? Trust everybody, but don't trust anybody. Don't ju don't trust just anybody is what I want to say. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. Oh, I also want to let you know we're, we will not have any Trust and Believe Nomad Cast episodes next week due to uh, got a lot of appointment requirements and conflicting appointments, if you will. So we'll come back the week after next. Next show will be the 28th of March. That'll be the next time we get back together. So we won't have any shows next week. There will be no Trust and Believe Nomad cast broadcast next week. The next show will come back together as a group back in my army ways. We'll get back together as a group on the 28th of March. So mark it on your calendars. No new episodes next week. However, I will be active on social media, and I will probably upload some YouTube shorts. But for an official Trust and Believe Nomad cast, no shows next week. We'll be back on the 28th of March. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you for everything. Let's say it all together. Trust and believe.